As children, we all enjoyed making marks on paper, the messier the better. But as we got older, we became more and more self-critical until we gave up around 11 or 12. Now Picasso once said he wished he could paint like a child. Today we're going to reconnect you with that creative spark you abandoned all those years ago. If, on the other hand, you're already an experienced painter, you can develop your skills in a masterclass where you'll receive helpful critique and feedback. Here at the Workshop Art Centre in Willoughby, you'll discover the joys of painting en plein air, French for outside, preferably on a sunny day. As well as sculpture classes, the centre also offers three different types of printmaking and a great ceramics class. So, if you would like to be challenged and encouraged in many different fields of artistic endeavour, why not enrol at your local art centre? I've always wanted to do to paint and, and make art ever since I was at school, but I never got to do it at school. So I only really started around when I was 40. Yeah, and it's just such a lovely passion and uh, it's always evolving. So, you know, it keeps life exciting. You're still challenged by w working on, on different I stuff. I think it's good working with other people and yeah. uh, that's the whole thing. You Absolutely. all rub off one another and you yeah. inspire each other and, you know, pick up things from other people, I think. Fantastic. yes, Fantastic. Yeah. It's a great group of students and they're all very dedicated. Uh, most of them are very experienced artists. They've, been, they've had their own art practice for a number of years, some of them for up to 30 or 40 years even. Julian, what are you working on here? Well, it's actually a, a landscape which is to have many trees, as I am a tree person. And the idea being, uh, this is the background, it was based on a scene I took a photo of yeah, yeah. in Tasmania, my, okay. my love. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, so it'll be black and then the trees will be blackened in front because it's nearly dark. Right. When you do any form of art, I think it would apply to music too, that part of your brain is a separate part of your brain and all your other issues of life and family are secondary at that time and that I think is a really important thing. And what is the average age group of your students? Uh, well, it would be in excess of 60. They're, they're basically a body of retired people. We do have children come through on the weekend, but essentially it's people who are looking to sort of you know, extend their, their retirement time to look at different activities culturally, who move around between everything from painting to sculpture to ceramics, who try different things. And eventually, usually, they settle in a discipline. And um, we have a lot of emerging artists from older groups of people so they people often who didn't start from a younger age but become themselves exhibiting artists wow is that right oh, yeah. we have yeah members here who probably we have members who've been here probably um, sometimes four and five decades <laughs> we have our oldest yeah. um, person would be in their late 90s who comes here okay. yeah. This uh, lighter clay sculpture is just sort of an organic creation. Mm -hmm. I just started with a triangle and just worked from there, just uh, let it form itself almost. Okay, and are you going to fire and glaze that? I will fire it, I won't glaze it, but I will fire it um, and then maybe faux bronze it, but maybe just leave it as is. Okay, and, and what, what about this one here? And that was done with a brown clay and um, that was faux bronzed afterwards. It's a good social environment and uh, you come for that almost as much as you come for creating new objects. Today it's a sculpture class so we're working in a whole range of different media. Everyone gets a bit of a go in a whole range of different media. They choose the direction they want to take. The student comes here. We've got people here who are brand new to sculpture. We've got people who've been doing it for a number of years. So they're working in a media as diverse as paper mache, clay, uh, carving in wood, whole bunch of stuff. It was my first day. <laughs> well, <I think> <laughs> well, that's pretty good for the first day. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, did, did the teacher sort of um, guide you at all? In, in yes, the, well, the... I, I don't understand about the technicalities yeah. and the materials yeah. right. I'm working with. Yeah. So, as Richard said, that's mm. mainly what he's here for. Fantastic. And okay. Uh, I like the drawing, though. Is that, is that, yes, is that... that's... Um, that's 
the it's actually a male dancer that I drew. Oh, that's lovely. Um, that is fantastic. That's at great. A, at a ballet class in London. Oh wow! So now mm. I'm, I want to bring him home to Sydney. Yeah, <laughs> quite right. I just noticed um, your your work looked very different to the clay work. Could you tell me what, you, what you're doing here? This is all paper mache. Um, I use pulped up paper mixed with PVA glue, mm. and. I like the way it's clean and it dries mm. very nicely without having to use a kiln. And that, that's an example of a dried piece? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Have you always done art or is, is this a new... No, new this is fairly new. Yeah. Fantastic. For new. a very new venture, that is, yeah. that is really creative, wonderful. Half lizard, half man. And what's, what's the inspiration for this piece? Well, I love to uh, create portraits, whether it be painting or sculpting. And I'd been painting for many, many years. And uh, last term I joined Richard's class. Mm. And so put all that, those years of painting in, and drawing into clay. Mm. And um, I find that I also want to venture away from it. So mm. the combination of the animal and the still creating the portrait, still creating, is, 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 uh, interests me. So <laughs> I'm having great fun. And so you, you, you'd recommend this, this class? I would to, thoroughly to, recommend um, it. <laughs> yes, I would thoroughly recommend it. I think it's a, um, a great group, not too many people, a um, uh, great teacher, you know, we get individual attention. Uh, so yeah, thoroughly recommend it. About 15 years ago I joined uh, the Workshop Art Centre as a student um, and uh, I started learning about uh, abstraction and doing abstract art, which, which was an interest of mine. I think the appeal of coming here is the community. The people love coming and working with like-minded people who all, who all enjoy the same art disciplines um, and the, they, they, they get a lot of inspiration from the other, from the other students. Yeah. Our average age is much older, uh, naturally, because those are the people that have got the time to come here during the week and term time uh, to, uh, to work. But of course we also have evening and we have weekend classes and uh, so you know and holiday workshops so uh, you know people are able to find a time or a slot that suits them uh, to come here my aesthetic is informed by east asian pottery much more than um, right. european traditions and um, the classic forms and glazes so for example this is a celadon glaze and that's a fairly classic um, sung form of bowl yeah. I've been coming here pretty much one day a week for the last six, seven years. I've got a background um, running an art gallery, a ceramic art gallery, oh, right. and collecting so that when the art gallery closed, people said, now you've got to bloody make the stuff. <laughs> Is there any, any other aspect of the, um, of the studio that you well, enjoy? Well, it's the facilities, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, it's the approach to teaching. But it's also the social situation where the people come, we all cooperate, we become friends and um, exchange information ideas so that it's, yeah, it's a very popular place. So, so plastic hasn't conquered all? Oh no, definitely not. <laughs> Things can still be broken. And plastic is much more destructive to the environment than course, um, pottery. Yep. Oh, hi, Anthea. Uh, could you explain uh, what, what, uh, what you, what's going on here? Yeah, sure. It's um, a lino block. It's actually um, an acrostic etch on the lino. So okay. you paint the positive image on with bitumen and, um, no. and then paint the acrostic in the negative spaces so okay. that the acrostic bites as well as technical skills, you've um, improved uh, other, other aspects of your life? <laughs> oh, sure. It's mental health, for sure. <laughs> Rosemary, uh, what, what stage of the throwing process is this? Oh, I'm actually centering it at the moment. That's what I'm doing. I'm centering it. And, um, and then afterwards, I'll try and bring it up but not in front of you. <laughs> I was impressed by the um, sophisticated mark making in the abstract studio and the articulate way students talked about their, their artwork. And then in the ceramic studio, 
we were introduced to the concept, an Eastern concept, of an articulated calm. In the sculpture studio, I found I was particularly impressed by papier mache. I never realised it could be a serious art medium. Um, also, the the other impressive thing was how you've got in the same studio you've got complete beginners and people that are really experienced. This this adds to a really creative environment where people spark off each other and learn from each other as well as the student. And they're there at specific times, unlike my days at art school. Just about everyone alluded to the pleasure of being amongst fellow art practitioners.